Hi friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Juan, I'm a yarn addict, hence the name Juan the Yarn Addict, and I want to thank each and every one of you guys for stopping by to check out my video today. This is a yarn and crochet channel where we talk about all things yarn and all things crochet, so if that interests you, please sit back and watch this video because today, my friends, I offer you another go-around of Whipping It With Juan. So I did the first one about three days ago, I think, and I did it as a test to just see how it did you know, out there on the YouTube streets. And I said to myself, if it didn't do well, I'll pull it back, no big deal. I won't start anything new. Um, but I wanted to try something different. So I did, and to my surprise, everyone loved it. I didn't get any negative feedback. In fact, people were surprised at all the things. So number one, they were surprised at my crochet speed. In reality, that is my normal speed. To me, that's not fast. That's just how I've been doing it. Um, I don't really gauge myself against anyone else. I don't consider that fast, but many people think that's fast, and I'm like, okay, fast it is then. But um, I will continue in my pace, and that's just how I do it. Um, but anyway, I say all of that to tell you guys I added a new whip to the collection. I know. So I've shown you the whips I had a couple days ago. I added a new one. I was inspired, and I'll tell you about that in a second. But in addition to that, friends, I came up with a new thing. So I have these baskets. I've shown them on my channel, I think, two or three times. I'm not really sure. But um, I got these at the $1.25 tree, and I paid $3 each for them, and I got 12 of them. So my new rule is, is that um, I will not jump onto any new projects if all of these are filled. So, so long as I have empty baskets... I'm game for anything new. So right now I have five left and we're already in March. <laughs> I still have nine more months to go in the year. So I have to really be selective on what I choose. That being said, I did start a new whip, which the basket is right there. I'm looking at it. I can't wait to show it to you. Um, so there's really no backstory to it other than I was inspired. Like if you've watched my earlier videos, friends, you know that I've had Granny Square Palooza videos with all of my granny blankets. Um, I have blankets all over this house that are different kinds of Granny Square blankets. And so I was inspired. I happened upon Crystal's video where she did that eight pointed star blanket in granny squares, or not granny square, the granny stitch, you know? So I sat down, I watched the video, and I said, I have to make that because I, I don't have it here. So I was inspired. I saw the way that she put it together. She had like groupings of peach and then groupings of the teals. And she did the bobbles on the ends, which it's not really my style, but I know many people love that. And she even said that I can, you know, put a different border on the end if I want, which I think I will. But um, I decided to do it in my colors. So let me just show you. Well, first, let me, yeah, let me show you the colors. So these are the colors that I chose. Let me just put them in the correct order. Just give me one second. So you can see the full picture. <laughs> okay, so that might be a little better. So darks, mediums, and lights, purple, and gray. So that is what I'm running with. Originally, I chose brown. It was like a dark, deep, dark chocolate brown with like a cafe latte and then this cream. And I said, you know what? No, I want to do the gray. So... That's this. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Now, I started it about an hour and a half ago, and I reached out to some friends, and I said, hey, I'm going to start this blanket. I'm going to show it to you in about an hour. Tell me what you think. Be honest. And so um, I worked on it for about an hour, and I showed it to them, and they loved it. So not that I needed their confirmation, but I like opinions. So this is what I'm at. This is what I have, and I just change the colors every row. So dark, medium, light, dark, medium, light, and I'm just repeating the pattern all the way through. 
and I'm going to continue going on and on and on. Um, I think she said that she went 39 rounds. I may go a little more than that. Just, I'm going to use what I have here. I wound up picking two colorways, or two skeins of each color from the stash. So in total, I have 12 skeins that I'm working with. So until it runs out, that's what I'm using. So this is the whip that I will be working on. I'm using a six millimeter crochet hook. I have my darning needle to sew in my ends and I have my Christmas scissors to do all the things. So I've been sewing in my ends with the exception of the last two rounds. Um, so the dark purple here and then the light purple. I just have to sew that in, but everything else is sewn in, which is nice. So again, it was the granny stitch. I had to do it because I love doing it. So there is that friends. So for this video, I'm going to be working on this whip. I'm going to be answering questions. I posted on the YouTube streets. Hey guys, I'm doing a whip it with one video. Ask some questions. Give me some things to talk about while I work on the whips. And you guys did not disappoint between YouTube, my fan page and my group. I got about 160 questions. So obviously I can't answer them all in one video, but what I will do is answer them in multiple videos. So yeah, I'll go back to them and I'll answer them as we go along. So I have that, um, I have the whip, and then I have a few pieces of Happy Mail that I wanna open up at some point during the video. Um, you know, when I wanna give my hands a break, I'll go ahead and open up a piece of Happy Mail and then come back to the whip, answer some questions, you know, and do all the things, okay? so. Let me go ahead and reposition the camera so you can see what I'm working on while I'm working on it. And we'll get started, okay? Just give me one second. Okay, friends, so I am back. I took a couple of minutes to sew in my ends. I had the last two rows that needed to be sewn in. So I went ahead and took care of that. Um, and then I set up my colors to figure out like what the next color was in the sequence, which in this situation here, the next color would be the white. So I'm ready to roll with that. Um, I have my iPad here to answer some questions. And then the Happy Mail is there. So whenever the mood strikes, I may hop. <laughs> Go from here and here. And then I have Chip here, right? And then I have Matt and I have Raphael. So we're, we're good. And then the No Drama Llama back there. I'm in good company, friends. And Chip's watching you guys. <laughs> <sighs> Let me go ahead and join this. I was so inspired by this. I'm like, this is so great. I have to do this. And I have to tell everybody that I watched her tutorial and I'm like, I have to make that. I mean, all things considered with all the granny square blankets I have in my house, I don't have this one. So I have to make it. And I watched it and I was like, I love the colorways that she chose for her blanket. Um, it was just nice. And I'm like, well, you know, for me, I wouldn't make those colors for me, but I can make them in the colors that I like, which gray and purple. We love a good gray friends. You know what I mean? So I'm like, yes, this is definitely going to happen. And I'm going to do it right away. <laughs> I just came across it today, friends. I'm like, where have I been? That video has been out for a little while now and I have to work on it. So when I initially told my friends about it, they were like, don't you have all those other whips that you could be working on? And I'm like, true story. I could be working on those other whips, but I'm not going to be working on those other whips until I have this in a basket and already started because I don't know when inspiration hits friends, you just, I mean, sometimes it's a knee jerk reaction. Like you just have to get your, your basket out and you have to get your materials. You have to get started. That's just how I was with that tutorial and with that blanket, you know? And I just thought to myself, how cool would that be to have this just somewhere in my house to look at and say, those colors are amazing because they're my favorite colors. I just love working with them, you know? And I'm working with uh, Loops and Threads yarn, which, I mean, 
hello. I love it. Loops and threads. You know? It's all the things. <laughs> I love how thick loops and threads is. I love um, the cost. <laughs> uh, they recently had a sale. Um, it's March 11th, by the way. So the sale ended yesterday, but they have online only extension for another day. 40% um, off regularly priced items. And so their yarn is still on sale 40% off online. So that makes one of these skeins, as of the date of this video, $2.38. And I live in Delaware, so there's no sales tax. So, yeah, I'm going to stock up and have all the things because when I'm inspired, I want to be able to pull and have it ready. And so, yeah, someone asked, Juan, what do you do with all that yarn? Like, aren't you hoarding? Like, that's hoarding tendencies. They were like, I saw that other room. I saw all the things. <laughs> Which is true. I have taken groups of people to the other side. And I've shown them the mountains of yarn that I have. Um, and to be fair, I did say that I was in the middle of remodeling and moving everything around. So when you do that and you have a lot of yarn, it looks like an episode of Hoarders. Because you have piles of this and piles of that and it's all kinds of crazy stacks of yarn so when you're just happening upon that for the first time you're like wait a minute that had to have been there forever but in fact no that's not how that went anyway um no so it's it's not hoarding tendencies i actually look at it as my retirement so you know you have to think smart about this friends when we buy vintage yarns off of eBay, or if we're gifted vintage yarns from friends, which both cases for me have been true, um, you look at the prices on those skeins. I mean, 99 cents for a skein of yarn. I have skeins that have the price tags 49 cents for a seven ounce skein of yarn. Um, yeah, inflation, friends. Get it now. If you have a place to store it, store it, bag it up, Keep it out of the elements, you know, the sun. Keep it dry. Keep it dust-free. And it's good to go. It, acrylics, I mean. Um, your value yarns, your value acrylics, I mean, they'll stand the test of time if you treat it right. So buy it now while it's inexpensive, on sale, 40% off, $2.38 for, you know, loops and threads, right? Store it. And who knows, 10 years from now, that same scheme could run 8 or $9.00. But here, I only paid $2.38 for it, and it's still good because I took care of it, you know? So it's an investment. You know, I've been doing this going on 31 years, and I remember when my Karen One Pounds up here were $5 at Woolworths. And back then, my aunt and my grandmother were like, Juan, that's so much money. And I said, true story, yes, it's a lot of money. And it was for the time, but they're now like $13, $13 for one of those in some places. And if you go online and you just type Karen one pound, you'll see them even higher than that. I'm like, there's no way that I would pay that kind of money for Karen one pound. But, you know, when you get a deal and a steal and you can get it for six or seven bucks as opposed to $13, then yeah, you got to take advantage so, to answer that question, no, I'm not hoarding. I am planning for my retirements because when I retire, and eventually I will, I want to be able to sit at home with all of my yarn and create amazing things or watch some amazing tutorials out there and have the yarn readily available for me to play with and just relax and drink my coffee and have all the fun. That's kind of like what my plan is for the future for myself. And, you know, all things willing, hopefully in this house or on a plot of land. And I've, I've talked about this on one of the lives. I would like a plot of land 
<laughs> with, you know, my house and then a separate house just for my yarn. Maybe not like a whole house, maybe like a double wide or something or a modular house um, where I can just have a studio to record and then rooms filled with different kinds of yarn. That's what I want. And there's plenty of places, you know, with open land still. I'm just waiting for the market to do what it needs to do to jump on some land, you know. And when that happens, then we'll be making the move. I'll be recording it. It'll be all the things. We'll have lots of fun sharing in that experience. So, yeah, I can't wait. That's what I have planned for my future and all of my yarn. Now, I'm going to continue buying yarn. I'm going to continue giving it away. With exception to some of the things that I said in the last one, the last go around here. You know, ombres and variegated. Because variegated yarn, like once it goes, you know, discontinued, clearance, it's really hard to find. So, you know, I have variegated yarns that were very difficult for me to find. Like, I had to know somebody who knew someone who had it, you know, and I had to buy it off of them just for me to have it. Um, so if I come across variegated yarns now, who knows, 20 years from now, it won't be around. Everyone will be like, oh my goodness, look at that. That's so vintage. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my logic. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it, friends. Let me put this down and ask or get another question. So, let's see. <sighs> let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. Let me see, let me see. What are your top favorite yarns? Okay. Top five favorite yarns. See, <laughs> I love questions like this because. Right now, my top five favorite weren't my top five favorite last year. They change, and every year it changes. As new yarns come out, it changes. So I like to being asked that question often. So um, last year versus this year, there's only three yarns that are still in my top five. So... Um, in no particular order, I can't do that to myself. Like, I'm not going to say that is my number one yarn, but um, the five are all equal in my book. Like, they do no wrong. <laughs> They're perfect in every way possible. Um, so, yeah. I think that number five, for me, would have to be Karen. So the Karen one pound, the Karen jumbos, Karen. Um, five favorite yarns. Maybe I need to be a little more specific. So it would have to be the Karen one pound. It is just so great for so many things. Like it could take a beating. These yarns, it could take a beating. Um, I've made doggy blankets and they've torn them up and they've stood the test of time. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, for sure. The next one is Lion Brand Scarfy. So, I love my Scarfy yarns. Um, <laughs> I hope they're not going to eventually discontinue them. I hope that they're going to still be around. I'm not saying that they are discontinuing them. I'm just kind of shocked that Michael's put all of their Scarfy on clearance and just virtually did away with it um it just shocked me because michael's had scarfy for such a long time and from what i remember um and then you know just to knock it down to five bucks and just get rid of it like that had me a little shook if i'm being honest but i love scarfy yarns some of my best work came from scarfy yarns so definitely like that um let's see so we have caron one pound we have the scarfy yarns from line brand 
Um, the next one is a new one. Premier Basics is another, it's a new one. It's another one of my favorite yarns. Um, it wasn't last year, and here's why. I wasn't exposed to it. I just, at the time, didn't think that I needed to try it, you know? And I said to myself, you know what, Juan? You don't know how good a yarn is unless you give it a try. So I gave it the good old-fashioned try, and I was blown away by how good that yarn is. So it's squishy, it's soft, it gives me all the things that I need it to give me, and how many different colorways are there? Oh my goodness, they have all the colors. And then this year specifically, I've dug into chunky yarns, I've dug into DK weight yarns, because for years, I mean years, I was strictly four weight. You know, anything four weight yarn, that was my jam, that's what I did. I didn't really care for anything else because I knew what I liked and that was it. So this past year, I was just inspired by so many content creators that I needed to get out of my comfort zone and try these different weights of yarns. And to my surprise, I really enjoy the different weights of yarns, and more specifically, from Premier Basics. So, um, Premier Basics Worsted, amazing yarns. I love it. It's great. Great yardage for the price, for the quality. Some people may see it as pricey, but once you actually work with it, you'll realize why it's how much it is. I know I said that wrong, but you know what I mean. Um, the DK weight yarn, the Premier DK, good stuff. Great yardage for the price. It goes on sale quite frequently. Um, so that's great. Love that. So that's three of the five. Ugh. Okay. So number four, Red Heart. It will always be one of my top five yarns. And I hold them all equally. So Red Heart. Red Heart Super Saver, Red Heart Ombre, Red Heart Variegated, Red Heart Stripes. The entire family does no wrong in my book. Why? It stood the test of time and it continues to do so. Like, say what you want about how itchy it is and all the things, but I absolutely love the yarns for me. It's just my jam. I love it. And yeah, throw it in the washer with some fabric softener. You'll never know how rough it was when you made your project. So that's, that's that. And so let's see, to round off the top five, this is difficult because there are so many good yarns out there. So many good yarns. Um, this may come to a surprise for many, but it's only because I've been exposed to it. So Malabrigo Rios. <laughs> yep. The Malabrigo yarns. Um, I've worked with it off camera and I am in L-O-V-E. <laughs> I love the yarn. I do. I mean, I don't work with it as much as I do everything else, but I really love Malabrigo Rios yarns in particular. Um, I just enjoy working with it. I love being able to, you know, open up the hanks, put it on the swift, ball it up, and then just make things. I recently made a hat and scarf set um, using the juniper, I think it was. It's, it's the hunter green color, whatever name that is. Um, I made a hat and scarf set for a friend. I didn't put it on the camera or anything. But yeah, it was great. I really enjoyed working with it. So those are my top five yarns for now. It may change. I mean, who knows? You never know. Something new may come along and I'm like, ugh, 
I have to try it. And then I fall in love with it. And then something comes off the top five. So there's that. Let's answer another question. So I have to keep unlocking it every time because I'm long-winded with my responses. I apologize. <laughs> okay. So. I'd be interested in your process for coming up with new patterns, like the actual process from idea to execution. So, that's a good question. One that I'm not asked often. Often enough, if I'm being honest. So, from idea to execution, it starts with inspiration. You get inspired by seeing something, and it moves you to a point where you feel like you need to sit down with a piece of paper and create. So... That's kind of where it starts. You start with inspiration. And then you let inspiration be your guide. And um, yeah, you just sit there with your, you know, piece of paper and a pen and you plan out. Like stitch multiples. First of all, what stitches are you using? What yarn are you using? You know, ask yourself the basic questions first. Like, what kind of project do I want to make with this inspiration that I have? And, you know, it could be a color. You could be inspired by color, like I was with this, you know. Um, you can be inspired by the stitch, like I was with this. So multiple things can inspire you um, to create something. You know, you can see something and be like, okay, I'm inspired, so let me go ahead and create something. So... Let's say this blanket, I was inspired to create something. Maybe, um, maybe not a blanket, but you know, maybe it wasn't the stitches, but maybe the colorway. So Bag of Days colorway was like teals and peaches. So the teals and pe peaches could have transpired into, you know, a corner to corner blanket. But to make it my own, maybe I will use different stitches in that corner to corner blanket you know so instead of using the granny uh, cluster stitch you know the three double crochets maybe I'll do puffs you know and do the corner to corner in puffs or you know th the possibilities are endless but that's kind of like how it all starts you know like how am I going to lay the stitches out um, Instead of like mimicking the peach, maybe I will do the corner to corner in the double crochet, but maybe what I'll do is um, I'll do like purple and blue, or I will do, you know, a warm color and a cold color, you know, and then you get into the color wheel and you start talking about primary colors, tertiary colors, secondary colors, you know, it becomes a whole thing, but yeah, it's inspiration to answer the question in a short way. You're inspired and you sit down, you grab a piece of paper and you start creating and you know before you execute you make sure that that same exact idea hasn't been done already the same exact way. You know, what's different about yours compared to the one that's already done? You know, is it a different set of stitches? Is it a different layout of colors? Is it you know, is it unique in its own way that you can say that it's not exactly like the one that's already out here because this part of it is different, you know? So there's that. Um, and I'd like to say when it comes to designing things, always listen to your instincts. You know, when you're sitting down to design something, you know if what you're about to create is something you've already seen, you know? You have to ask yourself, okay, well, what can I do differently about this pattern or about this design that will make it uniquely mine, you know? So, um, for instance, my Cambridge Knights, I used the Alpine Stitch. There's tons of scarves and hats out there using the Alpine Stitch. But what I did differently with mine was I used like a modified version of the Alpine Stitch. So instead of one row of singles and one row of double crochets, uh, like front post double crochets, I did single crochets and a row of treble crochets. 
and made it a little looser. It gave it better stitch definition. It draped a little better. It didn't curl, you know. So, yeah, that was my design. And what really inspired me to make that were all of the tutorials out there that, you know, showcased the Alpine stitch, but it was all one and the same where they were using double crochets, single crochets, double crochets, single crochets. And I said to myself, that's too tight. Like, let's loosen that up a little bit. Let's do a treble crochet, make it nice and loose and see how that works. So I tested it and it worked and a lot of people liked it. So that's how that worked out. Just an example. So yeah, let me go ahead and get to the corner here. I'm doing a lot of talking and not crocheting, which I need to be working on this whip, friends. Seriously. It does work up fairly quickly, and not just because of me crocheting. Um, the yarn that I'm working with today, in comparison to the Premier yarns, this is a lot thicker. This is like a thicker four, and so there's some heft to it. <laughs> Um, which I enjoy. It just requires more, more of this. <laughs> so, um, let me go ahead and get another question out of the tablet, and then I will go ahead and open up some happy mail, come back to the whip, and do all the things. Okay. So, we have to unlock, like always. Okay, let's see. Do, 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 do. Okay. So, Amber writes, where to start? Can you just come and sit with me for a day, lol? Okay. Is there any tricks or quick ways to tell if two yarns of same weights but different brains will work well together? Um, so, she gives me an example, which her example states, for my kale blanket, I use mostly big twists, but only had care on one pound on hand for white. It seemed like the Karen worked up thicker and I ended up with a weird ruffling effect. Is this just an experience in trial and error thing? Also I have trouble getting the squares of different stitches to come out the same size. I'm realizing starting the chain numbers um, the same don't always equal the same squ square sizes. Um, any suggestions? Um, sorry if it's more than one. I had trouble narrowing it down to these two. You rock. So. I will tell you that there is um, a significant difference between thicknesses of yarns. The ball bands will say four weight and four weight, but one could potentially be thicker than the other. And that's something that you really want to pay attention to when you're working your project. So if you decide that you're creating your project using a medium four weight yarn, but you're using different labels, what I mean by that is big twist, care in one pound, um, Premier Basics. So if you're using different labels, you have to make sure that the consistency is relatively the same. And what I mean by that is, is does it have bones in the yarn? Meaning, is, is it hefty? Is it thin? Um, you just feel the yarn side by side and say, okay, these are relatively the same. They'll work up the same. But if you squeeze one and there's some meat to it, and then you squeeze another one like Big Twist and it goes flat, you can't work those together. I mean, you can, but if you do, you're gonna have to expect ruffling, like in your case. Um, so that also affects the sizes of your projects. So if you're working care in one pound in one complete square, but then you decide to do the next square in Big Twist, well, the big twist square will naturally come out smaller because it is a thinner four-weight yarn. And so when you try to size it up next to the Karen one pound, the only way you're going to get that to line up is if you block it, which means, you know, you're going to have to wet it, lay it down, pin it, and make sure that it, it's sized up relatively close to the Karen one pound. Now, Karen one pound is a, a, a thick four-weight yarn. It's another reason why I like it. Um, but yeah, so you just have to be mindful of your, your yarn sizes, like feel it in your hands, you know, just don't take the ball bands word for it. Just feel it in your hands and you'll be able to tell yourself, okay, well, these both are the same, 
or they're both different and I shouldn't put these together if I'm trying to create some big project with it. Now, there are ways to work around that. So for instance, if you're using Karen One Pound and Big Twist, and that's what you have, and that's what you, you know you have to work with it, now your tension comes into play. So you have two choices. You can either tighten up your tension with Karen One Pound because it's the bigger yarn, and loosen up your tension with the Big Twist, and somewhere it will mix together. If this is tight and this is loose, it'll work, you know? Um, so you just play around with the tension if you can't or you don't have other yarns to pair up with that are similar. So I hope that helps. But yeah, just play with your yarn, feel it, and you'll know the difference, okay? So the next question here, um, how do you like the magic knot? Joining and cutting close to a knot? Um, I don't mind the magic knot. Um, I use it depending on what project it is. It's not my go-to. Um, yeah, I, I join and I do cut close to the knot. I just make sure that both knots on either side are super tight. Um, I don't cut right at the knot. I probably leave a centimeter of, or two because of wear and tear things happen. So yeah, I leave a little space. I don't know if I need it, but yeah, there's that. So let's see, let me jump around here. Um, let's see, let's see. So information on the Sophie's Universe group Zoom. So for those of you guys that are interested in Sophie's, Sophie's Universe, um, I did bring the book in here, did I? It's in here somewhere. It's a green book. And um, Sophie's Universe is a pattern that encompasses an entire book. And so what I thought of was, why don't we get a group of people who are interested in doing Sophie's um, and go on Zoom? So we can show each other our projects. You know, if we're stuck anywhere, we can talk about it. It's not members only. Everybody can join, you know, as long as you have Zoom installed on your PC or phone, you can join. Um, but yeah, it's just a place where we can meet up and talk about Sophie's Universe and, you know, help each other through it. Um, I've already started mine, and when this all starts, I will start a second one so I can start from the beginning with everyone else, but still have a project further along in case anybody has any questions. So that's kind of why I'm doing two. Um, but information in terms of like when that is starting hasn't rolled out yet. Um, I do have uh, Sophie's Captains where, you know, it'll be me and some captains and we'll all be working together towards helping everyone in the Zoom chat, the Zoom call, the video, whatever. Um, so yeah, it can't be a, a one person show here. So we have multiple people helping and yeah, so just be on the lookout for information on the community tab. I'll also put that information out on the podcasts, so stay tuned, um, listen to the podcast as they roll out um, for that information, okay? So there is that. Let's see, here's a question from Jax. Do you prefer indoors or outdoors? I love to camp, but also love to snuggle up in front of a fire. Definitely a cold weather girl. So, um, this is a very good question. <laughs> I actually, if I had to choose between indoors or outdoors, it would depend on where I'm at. So if, I, if I'm in colder climates, I prefer to be indoors. And if I'm in warmer climates, I prefer to be outdoors. But if I only had to choose one, I would have to choose indoors. Yep indoors because if I'm too hot, I have the air conditioning. If I'm too cold, I have the fire. So, and plus inside is the best place to work all the projects and have your nest. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that term, but those of us who have been crocheting for many years, maybe even some that are new, you have a nest, you have your area where you know where all of your skeins are, you know where your, your hooks are, no one touches it. You can get up, walk away, and then come back and resume business as usual. 
<laughs> That's what I like to call the nest. So, yeah. Indoors it is, my friend. Indoors. So, oh, you know what? Let's open up a Happy Meal. How about that? We're 40 minutes in. Okay. So, we're 40 minutes in. OMG. Okay, so this uh, piece of Happy Meal comes to us from Ola Joe. So cool. Ola Joe, you guys know her on the YouTube streets. I'm shocked that she sent me Happy Meal. This is so cool. Thank you so much, Ola Joe. I haven't even opened it yet. And I'm like, ah, so cool. Let's see. Ooh. Oh my stars. <laughs> OMG. Ola Joe, you didn't have to do this. Oh, wow. <laughs> She's like, pink, right? Oh, okay. Got it. Let me see. Let me see. Wow. Okay. Okay. Hold on one second. Let me see. Let me see this. Hold on. There's a card here. <laughs> Hi Juan, just a little gift to thank you for the magnificent job you did with Mama Wilma's 80th birthday celebration. This yarn is on Worsted Wilma, which has been a staple in Shannon's shop since the very beginning. How fitting, hence the name, LOL. Enjoy and love ya. Andrea Ola Joe. That is so cool. Their actual yarn base is named Wilma Worsted. It's an actual thing in their store. In their store, it's not something they made up. It's an actual thing. Wow, and the colorway here is called Wonderland. It's two hundred and ten yards, and it's one hundred percent superwash merino. Look at that, my friends. I love. Look at this. That's so cool. And now that, you know, I have pink into my repertoire. <laughs> oh, I love this Wilma Worsted. I can't wait to show my mom this. This is so cool. I love this. Thank you so much, Andrea. I really appreciate this. And here's a card so I can order more. Indie Dyed Artisan Yarn. Yarn Baby. That is so cool. Um, yeah, so let's see. Yarn Baby is the name. And um, Yarn Baby is on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, Ravelry. So if you're interested in checking out these yarns, which I am definitely going to do, isn't this great? Thank you so much, Andrea. I really appreciate this. Ugh, it's going to be hard to use this because of how, how it came to me. But thank you so much. I look forward to working with it. Okay. Next, we have a piece of Happy Mail from Missy. So the name is very familiar. I think that she is in my Facebook group. I see her in the comments and all the things. Thank you so much in advance for this Happy Mail, Missy. I appreciate you. Let's go ahead and open this up. Chip has a bestie, my friends. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at how awesome this looks. Oh my stars. <laughs> oh my stars. <laughs> Don't be jealous, Chip. <laughs> oh, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much, Missy. <laughs> it 
It says, Juan, thank you for all that you have done for us and the Yarny community. In such a short time, you and your mom have become very special to all of us. You bring a breath of sunshine into my life, and your giggle makes me giggle. <laughs> this scroll was Chris's idea. I found the pattern on the YouTube channel Complicated Knots. It wasn't the hardest amigurumi animal I've made, but it was still quite challenging. I hope you like it. Squirrel! <laughs> Uh, it says, um, Missy, okay, uh, uh, Missy King on YouTube, known as Grandma Lamb Chop by my grandchildren. Uh, this is turning strings into things. This is so cool. Thank you so much. So it's supposed to go like this. I was holding it like this, but it goes like this. It makes all the sense. I love this. Thank you so much. And look at the acorn. I mean, come on. Isn't that great? <laughs> oh, I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, it's so, so awesome. Let's go ahead and open this one. Is this a present from Mother? Let's see. There's a bag here. Mama Wilma. Okay. I'll have to make sure she gets this. And Juan. You may say my name. Okay. Let's see. Um, okay. So it's... Okay. smells so good <laughs> look at this I love this this is so awesome wow look at the detail on that that's so cool let me sit that right there are you kidding me right now wait what the what Look, Juan's list of all the things. Are you kidding me? Look at this, Juan the Yarn Addict. What did I do to deserve this? Are you kidding me? This is beautiful. The work that, I mean, are you kidding me? Look at this. Caffeine, <laughs> all the things, what? Oh, I mean, how do you even, look at this, Juan's mug rug and all the things. <sighs> Isn't this just What? How do you, how do you respond to this? Oh my gosh. Honestly, like this is overload. I in a million no. I mean seriously. Thank you so much. These are things that I'm, I'm not, like, I'm going to be like, okay, I can't use it because of how, I mean, this is all custom to me and my channel. Like, well, I can use this. <laughs> all you need is yarn and coffee and all the things. Bookmark. I'm going to use this for my Sophie's. Wow. Mug rug for my coffee. Love that. Hold on, there's a note. I should have read the note. I'm sorry. It says, Juan, the tea light goes under the angel's skirt to illuminate her. She was made on a single needle embroidery machine. There is iridescent organza in parts of her. She has 269,590 stitches. She was a joy to make for your mom. Are you kidding me? If interested in stitch counts, the bell 
35,714. Small Angel with Halo, 16,444. The Apple, 51,622 stitches. My Mug Rug, 13,532. Mom's Mug Rug, we haven't even seen hers yet, 20,239. Always think about the number of stitches to make up a crochet item. Wow. And then the card in purple. What? I also paper craft and make cards embrace the pink. <laughs> I love that. It says, Juan, I am so sorry it has taken me so long to get these done. No way. Don't ever apologize. I hope you're enjoying them. My other hobbies are machine embroidery. All these items were made on my machine. Uh, in Iowa, we give Golden Apple Awards to special teachers and educators, so I give you my version of it in a red and golden apple as you fill the qualifications in all the things. Keep up doing what you do. Love, Mary Cornwell. Thank you so much. I always, there are times where I doubt myself, like, what am I even doing? But when you get things like this, it boosts my confidence. It lets me know that I have a purpose. People are watching, people listen. And what they do with that is completely up to them, but this is amazing. Wow. This will hold a thinker notebook, but no, this is great. This is so amazing. Like, I'm sorry that I'm taking so long, but I'm just taken back. I'm like, wow. <sighs> Thank you so much. Let's look at mom's. Mom's mug rug. This is so beautiful. Wow. I mean, look at this angel. My, wow. This is beautiful. And look at that sheen. You see it? There's a sheen to it. Wow. And this is the bell. It's a blue bell. Mom's going to love this. It's pretty. And look at that. That's pretty all done in stitches. Wow. And then there's this angel. What do you say to this? I mean, it seems like thank you's not enough. Let me wrap that up. Thank you so much, Mary. I can't wait to show mom this. Do we wait until Sunday to give it to her? Yeah. I'm going to wait until Sunday to give this to mom. She has no idea. I can't wait for her to see this. And then there's a card for mom, which I'm going to leave in here for her to see on Sunday. My friends. I mean, what do you say to that? I feel like, like I said, I don't think thank you is enough, but seriously, thank you so much for that, for this. I mean, so thoughtful. I'm going to treasure this always. I'm not like, yeah. Wow. Okay. I hope you guys liked this episode. I mean, I got a little bit in uh, working with the whips. I did a whole round and some, you know, we did some talking. We answered some questions. I'll answer more questions in... Um, 
other videos, not just whipping it with Juan, but you know, I'll bag up some yarn and talk all the questions out and things. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, hit the like button. Um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Check to make sure you are. Um, and hit that notification bell to stay updated with me and my channel. My friends, it's been such a great time. I hope you enjoy this. Um, until the next time, uh, see you. Take care. Thank you. Bye.